So let us see uh, in patentability or novelty search, what are the essential uh, scenarios and aspects that needs to be taken into mind. So th the line of difference between patentability and novelty as we discussed is that novelty only focuses on the first important criteria of the patentability that is novelty or uniqueness or uh, newness. Whereas patentability considers all the three different criteria of patentability that is novelty, inventive step and industrial applicability. So here the common grounds are that whenever we search, we are actually planning to determine whether or not the inventive concept is known in the past or not. So from patentability perspective, we consider novelty as well as in, uh, obviousness as a part of search, whether the invention is new or not, whether the invention is obvious or not. Data sources, again, like, like, like we discussed, any possible data sources which may be patent or non-patent literature, uh, they are considered and most importantly, whether they are expired, whether they are alive, uh, the patents, uh, they are not at all, uh, they are of negligible importance, uh, either of these things can be considered as a data source. Most importantly, since the novelty, inventive step and industrial applicability is considered unique in itself, that means any invention should have only one type of patent application filed across the globe and there should be not repetition of the same invention and different patents for it. Thus, the search is not restricted territorial in nature, but it is considered across the globe. So all the literatures anywhere available before the filing of the patent application is considered uh, during the search of such in such searching types. Information for search is derived from inventors and from invention disclosures. Basically, inventors are the true and the first inventors or uh, people whose creation this invention would be. And thus, all the information is retrieved from those inventors via discussion or via, uh, you know, uh, any other sources. And in invention disclosures, basically the invention disclosures are those documents which are either filled by the inventors or the uh, you know the applicant wherein the details about the invention are mentioned in that it is not mandatorily required that the invention disclosures are always filled by the inventors but it is recommended that these are filled by inventors because inventors are the uh, right people to understand and disclose the technology and invention associated with the same now at the end whenever the search is completed the results are used to decide whether a patent application should be filed and it also helps to dis to draft the claims in the invention claim what are these claims basically we are going to see in the next session when we are going to discuss about the types of patent application but at the moment just uh, remember that claims are the heart of the invention without claims no patent application is granted in short claim is basically the work that you are proposing which is your creation or your work okay so uh, the search helps us to draft the claims in a manner that we do not claim or we do not uh, seek protection uh, for anybody else's work right so this is very important uh, uh, considerations from the patentability search so first uh, statement here indicates uh, what is the purpose of the search second indicates what are the databases considered for it third statement indicates what information or from whom the information is retrieved and fourth uh, point indicates uh, the results are used to uh, decide what or what is the purpose of the results obtained, right? Second type of search that we discussed uh, uh, mainly covers validity or invalidity part. Uh, there are few differences between the approach to be considered for this kind of search. Like we discussed validity search and the invalidity search are those search which are uh, performed by the uh, uh, person whose patent is either already granted or who wants to cancel any existing patent or patent application. So in this search, the criteria also changes. So here earlier, the criteria was that any literature in any form that is available is considered as a prior art, right? So whereas here, only firstly, only the patents are considered as a prior art here. That is very important to understand here. Second is which company or by company or entity, this can be performed by company or entity and it needs to check whether uh, the competitors have filed any such inventions, any such patent for it or not. So basically it also helps to search the date as well as the uh, prior art references which are filed before. When we say prior art references that means they have to be filed before the date of filing of your patent application. So he tries to search that as well. So validity search is the type of search wherein we try to find invalidate 
invalidating references for a patent that means we if i have a patent which is granted by the patent office i will try to find all the references in the past that is from the date of filing of the application to check whether such references can be used by anybody to cancel my patent in future right whereas if i want to cancel any granted patent then i try to find here whether anybody else uh, uh, you know any other prior art references are available for that granted patent before the date of filing of such application so that i can cancel that patent what are the data sources M mainly the data sources include the patent but non patent literatures can also be considered but most important criteria here is like they needs to be considered before the filing of the date or before the filing of the uh, earliest application which was filed for it that means in other terms it is referred to as priority date the first time filing of a patent application the date on which it is filed it is called as priority date ideally a year or more before the priority date are considered as the ideal results here so any literature before the filing of the application is considered as a date let me give you an exemplary scenario so it will make it further clear so if i have filed an application in 2016 and in 2020 this application is granted now and if i want to cancel this patent what i will do is like i will try to find the prior art references which are before the date of filing of the application that is of 2016 so any reference before 2016 would be ideal result for me and any result after 2016 will not be helpful for me because those applications the application was already filed for uh, before uh, those particular parrot references information for the search is derived from the claims in the patent in question so what we try to cancel here is like though we say that uh, the patent is cancelled but actually i told you claim is the heart of the invention so uh, to be more specific we try to cancel or invalidate the claims which are filed or which are granted by the patent office for a particular invention. Experts in the art are consulted to identify potential references. So this is just an optional step. You yourself can do that. Now what will happen or what, what is the purpose of this search? When the results are obtained, they are used to invalidate the patents in infringement cases. So for example, if uh, any person is already in a case and now what is the option left is like either I can just uh, agree to whatever terms this person is trying to suggest or I can cancel his patent so that he will not stop me further. So it, these patents are basically used to invalidate the patents. These references are used to invalidate the patents uh, whenever there is a case of infringement to prepare for pa patent enforcement. So like I told you, if I have a patent granted for my invention, I will check this, I will perform this validity search so that I will be ready for any future problems or future litigation or future enforcements uh, for my patent also. This is also one of the uh, ways to decide before I license my patent to anybody else for uh, a time being or I sell it, uh, I will do a search to check how strong my patent invention is. If there is no prior art reference before this, that means my invention is absolutely very strong, right? Similarly, the results are used to uh, draft an FTO opinion. So based on this, one can find whether uh, any of the product, uh, uh, you know, uh, before the launch can, uh, you know, can be considered as, uh, uh, you know, not eligible to be launched. So that is also considered as a part of uh, end result of this particular variety search. Infringement search, like I told you, infringement search is performed by a person who is having a patent and who believes that his patent application is being copied uh, by the product that is being sold in the market. So uh, who will perform the search? It will be performed by a company or a potential user. It will check only patents and not literature. So here, this is the thin line of differentiation between the other searches. In infringement, only patents are checked. Uh, okay, so if I have a, a patent here, okay, if I have a patent, then I will check for only patent. I cannot check if I have a product. If I have a product, that will be a different search called as FTO search. So basically I check whether my claims or the claim uh, which I am trying to uh, get a patent for or which is already granted, that is available in any of the products or not, right? Search rate constant, it is for 20 years. So uh, frankly speaking, it doesn't matter because patent life is 20 years. So infringement search has to be performed before the end of 20 years. What is the scope here? The search is to determine whether an enforceable potential product is available in any particular uh, uh, jurisdiction or not. 
the data source is any country because uh, infringement really doesn't matter the only point is whether the patent is filed in that country or not it matters so for example if i have a patent granted in india and i am checking infringement happening in united states it will really not make any sense because patent being a territorial right i have got a legal enforceability in india and not in united states so this is very important to understand here though their jurisdiction is not a restriction here though i can find a, a copying product in any jurisdiction but it will be only sensible or it will be only legally viable when such product is available in uh, your jurisdiction where the patent is already filed or granted for this is very very important to understand information to be searched is derived from the draft or the claims actually and the results are used to opine whether uh, this particular uh, product is being copying uh, the invention or not art search so basically you would note that uh, some terms may be differing from what i am trying to say here but this infringement and fto search are very uh, uh, let us say closely associated and hence uh, whenever i told you the only thin line difference is that in infringement search a person has a patent with him in an fto search they have a product with them right if a person having a product performs this infringement search it is called as fto whereas a person having patent uh, performs this search is called as infringement search pure infringement search state of art search this is really not very important because it's just a in general literature which may or may not be relevant but for example uh, if i want to find a samsung phone and i try to just type a word phone here so phone can give me n number of vast results and hence uh, such search where i am not very specific on the uh, purpose or the specifics of the invention they are referred to as state of art search I told you there are different types of other searches also one is spider search which we just discussed that is citation search what they are called as concept based search that means we just try to find based on the concept uh, and the purpose and really what is the input and output really matters doesn't matter bio sequence or chemical structure search basically these are more uh, critical from the perspective of biotech chemistry and pharma related life science related inventions wherein uh, the bio sequence or the chemical structure of the formulation is really important uh, and uh, they are directly searched in some of the databases if you want please let me know i can share some of the uh, uh, names of the databases for that as well wherein you can actually draw a structure as per your requirements and find whether such structure is already available or not uh, in last uh, session there was one query that please take examples of uh, uh, some biotech or pharma related queries i, I recall very good example here uh, which we are trying to use here in uh, the searching steps all the time so for example if you see a benzene structure the position of a carbon is really important uh, whether it is positioned on the top or some bottom uh, associated with any other carbon or not so if you want to find a different structure of uh, a benzene with some different unique positioning of a carbon you can just draw it in that particular database so you, you have various options to select various um, uh, you know shape of that particular molecule and you can just draw it there and you can just click on search and you'll be able to see what all results are available in such uh, you know across the globe for such kind of structure so be it partially overlapping or be it completely overlapping you will be able to see the results there itself concept based search is basically i told you we discussed about it so i don't want to go again in detail of that uh, how it helps how the prior art really helps one thing i told you prior art search because these are all the different types of prior art search that we discussed and anything that is available in the prior art is called as prior art search so there are different types of prior art search which we saw uh, mainly patentability search novelty search and then we have um, infringement search validity invalidity search ip landscape search these all are used to understand whole and soul what are the competitors doing in the market so competitive analysis is indirectly performed uh, by doing a prior art search it also helps to avoid any possible patent infringement in future right second is it also helps you to identify uh, how much broad and how much narrow i should write my invention so that i do not actually indirectly copy or step in somebody else's protection it saves the cost of invention and proceeding how because if i come to know in the first step before step 101 of the life cycle itself that my invention is already available in japan or china why will I invest time, effort and money to file a patent application and then fight at the end that I am not going to get a patent for, right? Thus, it helps you to, uh, you know, uh, save the cost as well as well as uh, the proceedings. It also helps you to learn about what are the advancements that are happening in the technology uh, from, uh, you know, your domain of interest. It helps to keep a competitive track like I told you. It stands against a legal issue. So what, what, can, what are the examples here? 
for example i'll just tell you a very famous example here so generally what happens is like if i if i launch a product in the market and down the line after one year somebody comes and say boss you are copying my patent and i want some damages because you are using it from last one year and uh, you have sold so many products and it has hampered my business now this person who is launching a product if he would have done an fto search to decide whether uh, there are any copy there are any patents which my product is copying or not he would have not fall into this condition let us assume that he has considered or he has performed fto search and he did not come across any such results which actually hampered which actually this particular person is saying that you are copying this invention so in that case when the case goes to the court this person whose product it is he can clearly claim that sir we have taken utmost precautions so that we do not claim on anybody's rights and we do not hamper anybody's business so we performed an fto search and in this fto search there were no uh, overlapping or there were no contrary results and that is the reason we launched the product so in such scenarios court also agrees to that if they have a proof of uh, those fto reports and court considers this person as an innocent infringer and the damages are comparatively very less than the person who would have not conducted an fto search i'll tell you a very exemplary scenario for example if a person who is copying the invention uh, he has to pay 100 rupees as a damages if he has not conducted an fto and if he is not an innocent infringer but if he is found as an innocent infringer uh, he would have to pay only 10 rupees this is a substantial difference so innocent infringer is referred to as a person who is unknowingly uh, trying to copy uh, the, uh, the, pro the, the patent of somebody else and he has taken utmost precaution to just ensure that uh, he did not copy it. But still due to some reason he falls into that category. right? So this is called as innocent infringer. Moving on. So uh, basically uh, Planning and conducting search. So now how to plan and how to execute the search is really important. We need to be straightforward focus when a, when a particular requirement comes to us, you need to understand what is the purpose of the search. So for example, if somebody comes to you and say that, uh, sir, we have a product which we want to launch in the market. Doing a patentability search or novelty search for that product is really not making any sense. As soon as the term product come into picture and he is planning to launch it in the market, the FTO is the most relevant type of search that needs to be conducted. Similarly, if somebody comes and says, sir, we have a patent granted and we need to check if somebody else is copying our invention or not. In that case, doing a patentability search is really not a wise decision. So you need to first determine the purpose of the search, like what this search has to be or what would be the outcome of this search, what I am looking for. Based on the purpose of the search, I need to gather the necessary data to conduct that particular search. For example, I need to understand what the invention is. If the patent is already granted, I need to check the granted claims of my invention to check whether the invention is actually being copied or not. Right? If I don't understand the invention itself, then how will I actually uh, you know, uh, discuss this particular thing to uh, finalize this particular scope? Is this clear? Now, similarly, the third step is to determine which databases needs to be searched. Now, this is a tricky part because every every searcher has his own uh, choice of database. So, for example, if you'll ask me, uh, I have done considerable amount of searching, more than 500 searches I have done in the lifetime. Uh, so, I believe uh, Google Patents is one of the best reliable sources, whereas uh, USPTO and WIPO is the second reliable source for the databases but if you'll ask the same question to any other drafter he would say sorry the searcher he would say something different so deciding which databases are to be used is really very important you need to develop a search strategy for it so how to develop a search strategy so search strategy is basically developed uh, when in terms of how you actually uh, perform a search and what would be my uh, core uh, uh, you know terms that I am going to search so I told you about the very good example at the start of this session that if I want to search for a Samsung phone and I want to see whether the Samsung phone has 4 GB RAM and whether it has 64 GB internal memory and uh, basically it will help uh, to uh, decide uh, whether this particular uh, uh, you know uh, phone is actually the phone that i'm looking for or not so you need to decide a strategy for it right 
now uh, the most important part is after deciding the strategy uh, how to decide a strategy is also one of the slides that i'm going to discuss with you but at the moment let us understand deciding the strategy is really important what terms to be used what keywords to be used is very essential perform the search now we have decided the database we have decided the strategy to uh, do a search so we also try to do a search exactly right once we do a search we will get some results now evaluating those results whether they are relevant or not that is also really important so any result you can get 100 results and that may not be even relevant so what to do in such cases so in such cases you can just uh, try to modify the strategy modify the keywords that are used and then repeat the search wherever required after repeating again you need to analyze and summarize the search and then based on that you need to generate the report for those particular search develop a strategy so here it was uh, we were talking about point number four here developing a strategy firstly we need to identify the key features of your invention so for example if I want to find a, a Samsung uh, phone and if I try to use the word Apple here it will not really make any sense because I'm not looking for Apple I'm looking for Samsung and thus identifying the key features are really important construct one or more possible search strings search things means what actually Basically, these are the uh, arrangement of the terms which you try to use in Google or any other databases to find the results. So, uh, if you note that uh, the, the terminology, if the, if the sequence of the terms change, the result may also vary on the Google. It is totally based on which number is uh, put first, which number is, which, which uh, you know, word is put first, word is put second and all those things. Now then, how many documents would you like to have in your final set? So if there are 1 lakh results that are being visible, it is practically impossible after hitting the query uh, that, you know, uh, like I need to review all those 1 lakh results. So I try to refine those results and try to see only couple of results which are very comfortable for me to review it. Time interval deciding is also very important because I cannot keep on doing the search lifelong. It has to be a specific time limit under which I need to wrap the search. So one way of handling it based on my experience is that as and when after changing one or two queries or after changing one or two strategies, if you start seeing the similar results, popping up the similar results, that means uh, you can stop the search at that point of time. So be it five days or be it one day, if you start re receiving the same results, then I think you can stop the search there itself. Right? All searches have limitation. So you need to decide how many documents you want to see in the report you cannot put all the lack documents in that report to a client your client would be pissed off right so he will actually have to see only those documents which are actually relevant closest relevant references to his invention and thus uh, preferably any uh, document which is like you know around uh, five or ten documents are more than sufficient search issued patents only or include published applications also this also is a very deciding factor i would prefer to include all those references whichever are you know either published or either granted patents because they are at one point of time uh, critically important to understand in terms of what are the developments that are happening in the technology identifying key features key feature identification is really important i don't want to go into details of that because this has already been discussed in a couple of other slides as well now um, where to look now whenever you got a results now question is where to look the relevant data so try to follow this sequence though it is not really mandatory to follow the sequence but normally if you follow the sequence you will be adapted to review all the documents in this manner and it will be more efficient as compared to randomly seeking it in the dark so you try to re read the title of the invention if you feel the title of the invention is go further and read the abstract if you feel the abstract has some relevance to your invention which is overlapping then go in the specification and then after that you please refer the drawings as well as the claims but what i would suggest is like a third step that is specification if in the specification you find everything relevant then you may skip the drawing and claims claims should be the last part where you can seek the information for so i would strongly suggest first is read the title second is abstract and then the specification if you feel that your invention has already been disclosed in the specification directly or indirectly they may have been disclosed in the claims as well as the drawings part so it is strongly recommended that you follow this particular title and then abstract so these are all parts which you are seeing in the screen are the part of the specification or the invention or the patent application and we are going to see it in uh, next two sessions that is session number uh, i think five and six uh, wherein we are going to details of the specification so that 
you would be aware of what are the different parts of this thing let me reiterate this workshop is actually just to touch base on all these concepts and to show you in real time some of the uh, exemplary uh, aspects which may be very helpful uh, trust me there are people who are uh, being trained uh, for years to do search and to do drafting so please do not accept that uh, uh, you know expect that uh, by doing a workshop of around three or four days you would be perfect or you would be uh, having all the knowledge about the searching or drafting this this is an honest attempt to make sure that you at least know or at least have a knowledge about uh, what we are actually referring to whenever in future such terms come into picture and this actually obviously requires a lot of uh, trial and error and then learning from that mistakes about this particular invention and how to a search this is the most important part leather rinse and repeat so you know this is an example i have intentionally used that that image here because whenever you shampoo your hair uh, basically it is not always the first attempt that all the all the hairs are cleaned so what we do is like we clean the hair after application of the shampoo and then again apply the shampoo so that we ensure that there is nothing uh, no dirt left in our hair same is the logic for search as well you search you evaluate you modify you repeat now when to stop i told you a very simple clue there you need to stop when you feel that uh, your results by even modifying the queries are same you know if they are similar results then they will be of no use to repeat the search again is this clear to you so this is what is most important part here so you need to search you need to evaluate the results you need to modify the query you need to modify the string and then repeat the search again right so this is very crucially important to understand here analyze and summarize results so you need to analyze your results you cannot just blindly rely on the keywords what you have put because they may or may not be relevant to your invention for example if uh, a b and c are the three terms that you want to find it in a uh, you know prior art uh, and a b c has a specific meaning in our invention but if you do a search you would be able to see that a is available in some other place b is available in some other place and even the context of that a b c would be different so pointing out such results or finding such results may really not be helpful to the client or helpful to your invention and thus even the terms as well as the context in which the terms are used are really essential to be understood and used for right do not do not only rely on the search engine ranking relevance there are there are cases where some results were found on third or fourth or page so please don't uh, rely on these things and that is the reason you you don't have to uh, narrow down your query to extend that where only one or two results are visible on your screen you can uh, con consider a considerable amount of number of results uh, which can be analyzed by you by human for example around 300 or 400 results for that matter and you can start reviewing that particular results review the attorney review the result with attorney and possibly the inventor so for example you cannot keep on just reviewing it at your end because uh, when one person's perspective is made he always stick to his own perspective and try to deny uh, any other perspective that would be brought in front of them i have tried to show here some of the exemplary uh, databases which can be used uh, we are going to discuss couple of databases here especially the google patents which is very widely used database and then i'm also going to show you how to use the same database for uh, google scholar and other things just for clarity there are two types of patent databases that are available one is a patent database which is paid database another is a non paid database so non paid databases are those databases which you do not have to pay any subscription fees or any subscription amount and you can do the patent search whereas the uh, uh, paid databases are those databases where the subscription has to be taken the amount has to be paid maybe one time or maybe continuous but uh, rest assured that uh, the paid databases are so expensive that uh, a normal person or a normal individual user cannot afford it for example thomson innovation crystal orbit patser padbase exemplary uh, are these the databases which are paid databases uh, i have personally used thomson innovation crystal orbit patser and padbase and the subscription fees is on an average for each database is monthly around 2 to 2.5 lakh rupees so this is the impact of this particular thing in this slide i wanted to show uh, yeah in this slide i wanted to show that uh, how a 
keywords are decided okay so keywords are for example those words which after your discussion or after reading the invention disclosure you come to know that these are the key terms which are used in uh, the invention to come up with the invention classification is uh, not really important assignee is again not important and citation again is not important because classification and assignee and citation will unnecessarily restrict your search so keyword based search is the most relevant search that needs to be performed and it is mandatorily required to be performed classification based search can be done which i'm going to show you in the next couple of minutes assignee search can be done but don't uh, just uh, rely on those particular search keyword based search are really important now when you do a keyword based search it is really important to understand that your search has to be broad your search has to be alternative in nature it has it has to include synonyms and spelling variation why this is really important because drafters the people who has drafted the claims or written the document he may write it in his own perspective and the terms and the language that he may have used may have some different meaning or different terminologies so for example characterized is the term that is used worldwide in india and us they use the term c h a r a c t r i z e d so z is the term used whereas in european countries instead of z they use s c h a r a c t r i s c d now it is not linguistic mistake it is just the tradition that they use so whenever you try to write a keyword so try to use it in a broadest possible manner alternate keywords shall be used uh, synonyms should be used and spelling variation should be used i have given one example at the bottom of this slide so for example if you are trying to use a keyword as mobile phone what will be the synonyms and other alternate terms for it today if i am a person who is working in this domain i cannot restrict myself from using only mobile phone i can use it as a smartphone i can use it as a electronic device i can use it as a portable device i can use it as a portable communication device right so these are all exemplary terms which you should try to use in your invention don't rely only on the term that you have used in your invention or the inventors have used in their invention the best example uh, transmitter transmitter is a very known device available in the market but it is not mandatory that since inventors or you have used the word transmitter you also have, everybody in the world has to use the word transmitter somebody may have used a device uh, name as transceiver it has the same function right transmitting means transmitting device right transmitting uh, source transmitting data or transmitting anything that can be used as alternate term so what i'm trying to humbly request here is like whenever you do a kind of keyword based search or you use a, a particular keyword try always to use it in the broadest possible sense try to use synonyms try to use uh, you know uh, the spelling variations and this is really important and it will help you to come up with the better and best results is the concept of broadening so here again the same example how to broaden your scope so mobile phone somebody has used the mobile phone i can use the word as handheld electronic device portable communication device i can use any other devices any other exemplary terms so these are either synonymous or any other different terminologies which are used for the same device right so for example for mobile phone many phones do, many people do not call it as a mobile phone anymore they call it just phone they call it as a, a smartphone right they also call it a cell for for that matter so it is really difficult to analyze or understand which particular document have used which particular uh, keyword and whether this keyword based search is really going to essentially build a very relevant document for me or not same i have given two other examples like pen drive and website and encryption so these are the examples of this particular thing right in the next couple of minutes we are going to see the uh, actual uh, search how it is conducted on the databases i'm going to help you to find couple of databases and then help you to show how a real time search is performed for any particular thing we are going to take random examples random keywords and then based on that we are going to conduct a search right so uh, let us do that as well <laughs>